Hi, this is Jim Janissey. I've got here for you a short video that's very important. It's very important because here, as we're passing the midpoint of the term, it's important for you to really have an effective way of wrapping up the work in this course. Now, unfortunately, some people have been rather behind in that, and I suspect there's a degree of panic. We're approaching the withdraw deadline that comes at the end of the seven week of the 10 week term. I hope nobody really has to consider withdrawing, but some people are pretty far behind. So make sure you take a look at this video that follows. It's based on slides and my narration of them. It's very important because I show you two different strategies for wrapping up the course. And the second of those strategies might apply very well to you, depending on your learning style and how you can most rapidly acquire the information you need to complete assignments. So without further ado, let me show you the slides that I've composed to show you what's going on with these two different approaches that I call the bottoms-up approach and the top-down approach. It occurred to me that there's a second way to use the resources in the workbook for GPH 205, so I prepared this short presentation to compare what I call the bottoms-up and the top-down methods for using the workbook to learn the material in GPH 205. This is a table of contents of the pages that we're going to be taking a look at. Just a bit of an overview, GPH 205, Historical Foundations of Visual Technology, requires two books, The Story of Art and this workbook. This workbook is the course. It takes the place of a learning management system in getting you to navigate to the web resources for this entirely online course. You probably already know this, but let me just go over it once again. The course is divided into four segments, I call them units. And each of these units has three items of work. There's a repeatable online exercise, which is instantly graded homework. It's intended that you do that multiple times, one question at a time, and it helps you review what you don't know that's the whole point of it, to force you to go back and read and view and find out where your statements are incorrect. And I'll show you an example of that shortly. The unit also has a short amount of written homework, which become notes for your reflective essay. And each unit contains a hands-on project that uses some simple materials to help you really experience some of the concepts that you've learned. The whole course ends with a reflective essay. There is no final exam. I give a lot of feedback and the ability to revise and resubmit work. And that feedback far exceeds what you would get from a midterm or a final. The reflective essay is very important for you because just as with these other items, it's worth 25% of your course grade. Exercises count for 25%, written homework, 25%, hands-on projects, count for 25%, and the reflective essay counts for 25%. Let's take a look just to review what an online exercise looks like and some of the important points. Repeatable online exercise, the contents are printed in the workbook. And each one of these exercises consists of five questions. Each question has 10 true-false checkmark statements. You see an example here of the first question in the first exercise. The intention is that you use these for notes, that you check these off at some point before you go online. And if you need to change your answers, you check mark here and you erase and you adjust so that your notes are complete. And you work a given exercise one question at a time until you perfect it. Then you go on to the next question. And finally, when you have notes that are accurate for all five questions, you do the exercise one last time. It is possible to get 10 points for each question. But I have to warn you, you cannot game this thing and just check mark everything and figure, well, you'll take the credit you get. Because although the check marks of the true statements each add a little bit to the question score, if you check mark a false statement, you can subtract anywhere from 30% to 100% of the value of the question. So your mistakes are counted against you, and that's just a little technique I use to make sure that 
you actually read these statements, that you're not just sort of trying to come in here and play a game with this and cheat yourself out of the learning experience. These are learning tools. They're not quizzes, although the online system that supports them calls them quizzes. That's just the mechanism that I use to implement this form of exercise. This, by the way, is based on acknowledged research that indicates that when you have to do this sort of thing and refine your answers, you actually learn things better. The written homework, the unit summary form, is kind of a simplistic way to collect information that you're going to find useful for the essay. There's one of these for each unit, and they each have the same format. Each row is a given civilization or era. Here we have the ancient Lascaux peoples that we cover first in Chapter 1 of the Story of Art. These are the kinds of entries I'm looking for. I've given you these so that everybody has correct information for Lascaux. That's because in the middle of the term, I'd like for you to write the first page of your reflective essay, and it's based on this information. So you all have that information to work with, as well as an example of what I'd like to see in these cells. In these cells, by the way, do not copy text from the workbook or from some other source and put it in here. I only read the first 50 words of whatever you put here. And the reason I do that is I want you to express in your own words, just as I've done here, these pieces of information about each of these civilizations. I don't want a bunch of text in here in what I call a shotgun answer, that it's in there somewhere. That's not good enough. I want the first 50 words to be the words that say what's going on. And that means you have to figure out what really is the answer to this question of art purpose for the African civilization, art purpose for Egypt, and so forth. This link down here, which you want to pay attention to, is this little URL. That's a little redirector URL. That will get you a copy of this form in a format that any word processor can open. That's the way you actually submit this, although the intention is that you use the print published workbook to accumulate notes here as you accumulate that information. The information is going to come from one of three sources, actually one of four sources. It's either going to come from the workbook itself or the story of art or from video lectures that are in the video playlist for each chapter that's indicated in the workbook. Each chapter in the story of art has a page in the workbook and it has a link to the video lectures and also supplemental videos, which is the fourth way that this information comes to you. So I'm giving you this as a study sheet so that you can accumulate information here. When you submit this, I grade it and I give you feedback and I essentially tell you what you missed. And then you revise and resubmit this. So you work yourself into a perfect set of USFs by the time that you're going to start writing your reflective essay. I shouldn't say that. You don't have to have all USFs in order to begin your reflective essay. You could even start the reflective essay on day one using this information, but it would probably be a little premature to do that. You don't have to pay much attention to this funny little barcode here. This is something that may or may not catch on. It's just an encoding of this URL that you can scan with a smart cell phone, an iPod or an iPad if you have a free scanner. And that's just a piece of software that interprets this with the camera that's already in the device. The unit summary form. These items are the pieces of information you're looking for. And as I've mentioned, it ties into this do it, submit it, get feedback, revise it, and resubmit it, kind of a mode of operation. The projects are intended to be fun. These have you doing things with your hands, for example. The first is to pull out some sheets from the workbook itself and fold them up into these perfect solid shapes. And the next is using some simple tools like a straight edge and a compass to construct a golden rectangle, which this chapter talks about as an important element of artistic design and architectural design from ancient Greece onward. In fact, the Egyptians seem to have had some knowledge of the golden rectangle. So what is it? Well, you learn about that in Unit 1. You put that knowledge to work here so you actually can construct one of these just on a sheet of paper. You take a picture of it then, and you send me a picture of you holding that item up. And that picture is what becomes your a submission for this particular part of the assignment. 
Now, most assignments like this have links of their own so that there's supporting material, in many cases a tutorial where I show you how to do this. The whole point here is to get you hands-on experience with simple materials to apply concepts and experience things that you're reading about. For example, egg tempera binder used with a powdered pigment or with a lake. What is that like to paint with? That's Project 3 gets you into that. There are online museum visits. That's part of Project 4. And these links help you explore web resources that illuminate this particular work. Let's just review what the reflective essay is very quickly. It's covered in Unit 5 of the workbook. It has its own little table of contents, so you get this help. It's about nine pages worth of information about the assignment. This is a first-person story with a little conclusion section at the end. First person means I, me. That is, you personally are having the experience. Whoever writes this writes it with the pronoun I quite a bit because that's the person living through these eras. You've discovered that you're immortal. You cook up the mechanism by which you discover that. And this becomes a story of you living through these eras. Now there's extra advice on the website at the Unit 5 page on how to do this. And that extra advice sheet is going to be critical to one of the two methods of learning in this course that I'm going to describe to you in just a minute. You now have a review of what the course is all about. These three items for each of the four units, that's 12 things you're graded on, plus the reflective essay is the lucky 13th. It's kind of a baker's dozen of assignments. Now, let's take a look at these two different approaches. This is what I had in mind when I composed the workbook. Notice the things that have percentages on them are the items that your grade is based on. I figured that the way that you would approach this is to start with the workbook. You start with the workbook because it takes the place of a learning management system as your guide, the thing that has the pointers to what you have to do and where you have to get that information to do it. So it points to the story of art and tells you when to read a chapter there. It points to assigned videos that support this work. It has content of its own because this course is about art technology and the story of art only covers the art part of it, what artists did, not so much on how they did it. So this supplies readings that supplement that. All three of these are resources that contribute to your learning. And actually there's two kinds of videos here. One are my lectures and the other are clips, video clips made by others that I have researched and found that I think very much illuminate the writings that are contained in the workbook and the story of art. These four different sources, two here and one one, all those different sources, it was my notion that you could work the questions in the exercises as you accumulate this knowledge, and it would help you review it, and that then once you've accumulated all that knowledge and you've done the exercise and finished the unit in the workbook, you move on to the unit summary form and you make entries there. And you also at that point within the unit can move on to do the project. So this within the, the dashed box is what you would repeat four times. You would do that. Unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four. And having accumulated all of this, you'd have your complete set of unit summary form notes, and you could begin writing your essay. Actually, I'm inclined to say that you should begin writing this even now. I could use that first page to review it to make sure you're headed in a first-person direction and that you're not doing things that will detract from your story. It's important for you to understand that you don't have to get all the units done to begin this. And the best way to do this, as far as I can see, is if you are writing this in parallel with experiencing the different civilizations and eras as you go through them in this iterative process, you could be writing the essay all throughout the term. There's still a conclusion to go on to it, but the body of it, that nine pages of writing, you could have accomplished. I call that bottoms up because you're getting information and you're building towards a summary of it. First level summary here is the unit summary form for the unit. And then, of course, this is kind of a summary of everything in the summaries. So you're starting at the details and building towards the big picture. 
It is handy for you to know what the big picture is, and that's why I encourage you to read Unit 5 early in the term. Now, what is the other approach, the top-down approach? I would suggest that it looks something like this. There's another piece of material here, which you'll notice doesn't carry a percentage. It's not graded. This is strictly for your own health. And I'll show you what that essay worksheet looks like in just a minute. But the point is, that's a device that could help you start at the top end by getting the highest level of summary information, and the whole approach is different. In this approach, you would start here. You would still let it point to these different resources, so you're reading these chapters as this dictates, but you don't do any of this work right now. You just plow on through as fast as you can. As fast as you can read and view, you attempt to satisfy the information in the essay worksheet. So let's see what the essay worksheet looks like. This is contained in a Click Me link on Unit 5 at the course website. This download will bring you six pages. There's four pages of writing before this one where I explain various things that are important for you to know. But this link here, piopi.co slash ehelp, will get you just this document as a word processable form so that you can fill in information in these cells, typing it in with your word processor. Now, once again, I've given you the information as to this very high level summary for the Lisco peoples. Let's talk about how this helps you structure your essay, because this worksheet is valuable for any approach, either the bottoms up or the top down. In this essay, you have to cover nine civilizations. Eight of those civilizations I've indicated what's required. Lisco, Egypt, Greece, the Roman Empire, the Gothic era, Renaissance, the Baroque, and the Impressionists, taking this up to about 1900. That's eight. Everybody has to do those eight, and you do those in the sequence I've indicated, which is the chronological order. Now, there's an additional one that you have to do, and you can choose. Assyria, Persia, Byzantium, the Islamic world. Those four are choices. You choose one of those to do as the ninth one, but you don't do it at the end. Of course, it fits in where it fits in chronologically. And the reason I do this is it's nice for you to have some choice. Some people, various people in the class might have different backgrounds. You might want to do something with the background that you're familiar with. So there's a little bit of choice in there, but you do it in chronological order. The way that you use this is the same way that I've demonstrated here for the scope. Your purpose in plowing through the material as fast as possible is to find these items of information. And I've even given you some big hints here. For Egypt, we're looking for tomb decoration. Okay, the purpose. What was the purpose of decorating the tomb? What were the rules to do it? And what technologies did they do it with? Same goes for pottery and ceramics. What were the purposes? And how did they form it? Did they have rules? I can think of some. And the technologies they used. Did they invent them? Did they inherit them from prior civilization? What did those technologies consist of? So you do this, and your driving force here then is these two pages. You want to put valid information into each one of these cells. And in a case where perhaps we don't know what the rules were in Lisco, you would also put in here not applicable or unknown, just so that you don't leave it blank. This becomes your very high level outline. The top level, that's what the top comes from, the top level of your information summary. The whole point of this is to drive you to get the essential information as you plow through the readings and the viewings as fast as possible. You're going to get familiar with that material by doing this. Depending on your learning style, this may be more relevant to you. This may fit better with you to just plow through the readings as fast as possible, plow through the viewings, and be making notes on this as you pick the information up. Then where do you go? Well, before I get there, let me just point out, the end of the essay, that is the end of your reflective essay, has three small mini-essays, which are conclusions. Each one in their own right looks like a thesis statement. Make sure you read this information in this extra advice handout for the reflective essay. You don't want to overlook the conclusions. They count for an awful lot of your grade in the essay. Let's go back and see how this form fits into the top-down method. It's here. 
You plow through these materials as rapidly as possible to complete this. Then you work back and you flesh things out. There's more information on the unit summary form than on that essay worksheet, that very brief outline. You work backwards and you do the USFs now for the chapters, and you work back even farther to get down to a lower level of detail. Perhaps this has helped you really acquire the knowledge to do the best and most productive work on the repeatable exercises. I would still suggest you use the exercise worksheets to take notes so that when you get to the online system, you're not just pounding on the keys and forgetting what you entered the last time, but you actually have an organized way of keeping track of the information. At the same time you're doing that, you could begin to knock off the projects. And these you can do in parallel with the exercise for a given unit. All of this is a way to get to the point of having the information you need. Based on this, you can then compose your reflective essay. This is perhaps better set up to composing the entire essay at the end of the term, but I would still like to see the first page of your essay come in in draft form by the middle of the term so I can see that you're going in the right direction. I'm trying to save you some grief. It has happened in the past that somebody not familiar with this approach to writing has launched off and developed a traditional academic paper, perhaps having ignored what Unit 5 says. In that case, it's kind of painful to get to the point of understanding that you've gone in the wrong direction once you've gotten quite far in that direction. So that's why I'd like to see the first page of your essay now, which is the middle of the term and slightly beyond, because I'd like to correct your orientation on this if it's not correct before you have a major investment in going in the wrong direction. Let's at this point go back to the table of contents and let's summarize things. There's two different approaches, the bottoms-up approach, the top-down approach. They each go in a different direction through the material. They each have a different orientation, either building up from details to the top level of knowledge and summarization, or starting with looking for that top level information as rapidly as possible and then fleshing out the details. Both of these wind up with the reflective essay and you have the information in these resources, primarily the unit summary forms, to compose a reflective essay. Let me just point out, the essay worksheet is very valuable in this method also because it does help you organize the information that you're going to have to put into here. It identifies that information for you. So keep this essay worksheet in mind, regardless of which approach you choose. One other point, make sure that you think about your approach. I've organized the workbook to guide you in your learning the same way that some people try to organize a learning management system. I personally think that everybody knows how to read a book, whereas sometimes computer interfaces need explanation. I wanted to eliminate the wasted time in that finding the information. Just start with the workbook and proceed through it. That was the intention. Either way, you're doing that. It just amounts to when you do this work and whether you're hell-bent on collecting the details and progressing towards this end in a linear way, or if you're much more excited about plowing forth and getting the essential information and then coming back to pick up the details afterwards. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please let me know if you have any questions or problems. Since this is now the middle of the spring term, I really would like to see the first page drafts of your essays coming in as rapidly as possible.